Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos, I'm here today, back with another Black Desert video. Today's video is going to be the much anticipated and much requested guide on the trade life skill in Black Desert. It is the only life skill in this game that I don't have a video on, and it has to be by far the most complicated life skill in this game. I've spent six months putting this video together. Six months of trial and error, messing things up, and let me tell you, I probably still don't have it perfect, but what I'm gonna try to do is take this super complicated subject and break it down and make it as simple as possible for a newer player to understand and get into. At the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and give you all the resources that you need in order to min-max this system to your heart's content as you become better at it. So this is gonna be a multi-part guide series. We'll break it down into easy to understand bits. Now quickly before we get into the video, if you're new to my channel, new to Black Desert, or you have been watching videos on this channel and still haven't subscribed yet, please consider it. Helps to grow my channel pushing for 100K and you'll stay up to date when new video guides come out, which is like multiple times per week. And without further ado, let's get into it and let's start off by setting your expectations right from the start. You will not get rich from trade crates. This isn't 2016, the market has changed pretty substantially. At best, you're probably just going to break even with any other multitude of things that you can do with your contribution points. However, making trade crates does allow you to make additional profit from any processing that you do on your character. So if you do AFK processing, you'll make additional money off of it by turning those products into trade crates. Additionally, trade crates do scale pretty hard as you continue to level the skill. We're talking like the many months to years time scale here. This is a huge investment. Just for a comparison, this video is gonna set you up with a trade network system here for crates that'll net you right around 100 to 150,000 silver per contribution point that you have per day. This is the system that most people use when they are determining how much money their node network makes. To put it in perspective, if you just went ahead and got a farm and planted the crops in the farm, for 100 contribution points, you'd make probably the same, if not more money than you would from this entire crate setup for half the contribution point cost. So yeah, you should really only consider even getting involved in this if you have contribution points to burn, if you're bored as heck, are willing to stick it out for the super, super long, long, long game, or you wanna feel like a business tycoon in Black Desert, which is the reason I do it, cause it's hella fun. Now, if none of those points interested you, I would seriously just recommend going to bdo.anbu.com here and filtering all of the nodes in the game by income and just picking some of the most valuable ones to spend your contribution points on for workers. I have guides on hiring workers, buying nodes, and all that information. So just follow one of those guides and go through it. You really have to wanna to be invested in this whole trade system for it to work. And I think that's my little pitch to get you in the right mindset before we get going with this guide. Now, if I haven't scared you away yet, there are two ways to make money with the trade life skill. So this skill right here, trading. The first way is to go fishing out in the ocean or really, really far away from Valencia City, then go to Valencia City and sell your fish and rinse and repeat. Reported numbers for this range from 35 to 50 million silver per hour. However, for that to work, you need a ton of inventory space, be really, really good at fishing and know what you're doing. So this is your sort of active money-making method with trade. The second method and the method that we're gonna show you in this video is crate trading. This is more of a passive system that also allows you to enhance the value of items that you would normally be processing. So all of like the woods and ores and all the stuff that your normal worker empire brings into your warehouses, you can process that and make more money off of it, basically eliminating the marketplace tax, which is 15 to 35% more money depending on whether or not you have a value pack. So it's a nice enhancement to things that you're already doing. Likewise, you could also just buy stuff off the market and feed it into a worker empire and still make a profit. And that is the profit number that I'm gonna use throughout this video. So whenever you see a money per amount of time, it's all based on just buying stuff, no processing. I don't think it's fair to include that in the value of it because that's processing money, that's not money that the trade nodes are bringing you in. Now I know that was probably super confusing, but I promise if you stick with me through the end of this video, it'll make a lot more sense. So please bear with me. The next thing we're gonna talk about is how you actually get to making money with these crates here in this game, with the trade skill. Basically, the general idea here is that you have various workshops located throughout the world. These workshops have workers working in them that you hire, who then go ahead and make goods. The goods that they'll be making are these trade crates, and these trade crates then get sent to the city of Valencia on the opposite side of the map, way over here, and sold at a various trade vendors in Valencia City. So you can see I have a stockpile of some crates that I've sent over that I need to sell next time I'm out there. Now the reason you make them really, really far away from Valencia City, then bring them here to sell them, is because there is a really simple formula that calculates the value of the crate when you go to sell it. It's the base value of the crate, so for example this one's worth 40,230, multiplied by the distance of the cities between each other. 
So for example, Grana that I just showed you to Valencia City is about a 113% scaling factor. You then have a bargain buff, which is applied based on your trade level. So you have a little bargain mini game that increases the value by anywhere from five to a lot of percent. And then there's a desert trade buff that applies exclusively in Valencia City after you reach Artisan 2 trading and complete a quest line. This 50% buff is huge. Like you need this. There's no point in even doing trading until you get this buff. That's how important it is. And we'll look at why it's so important in a later video. But for now, this first video is going to be about getting Artisan 2 trading to be able to get that buff and actually do anything with this system. And to do it, we're going to actually go through the full on process. So by the end of this video, you'll have invested a few days of your time and you'll know if you want to keep going with this or not. I think it's a really solid start. So to get started with this whole system and actually start making crates, we need to set up a little mini network between Calpheon and Trent. So Calpheon, major capital of the Calpheon region and Trent, tiny little logging village at the bottom of the region. And the first step in actually setting up a network between them is to connect the two cities themselves. If you've never connected a node network before, all you have to do is go to the actual node managers at the various nodes between the two cities, go ahead and talk to that person, click on the node management option, and you will see the option to invest into the node right here. It'll tell you you can buy contribution points into that node. If you have a value pack instead, you can just click on the nodes from the map and invest the contribution points. You don't actually need to go to the location. So value pack is a huge bonus for doing this. However, it costs 10 energy to do that. So keep that in mind if you run out of energy. So yeah, we're going to connect Calpheon through these various nodes, which should be popping up on your screen if I'm any good at video editing today. But we're going to go with Gabino Farm to North Kaya Mountaintop to Fennel's Cabin, Rudum Sentry Post, Rudum Outstation, Tabari's Cabin, Abandoned Monastery, Lumberjack's Rest Area, and finally Trent. The reason we're going in this direction is because it allows access to various woodcutting nodes that we're going to end up using in later portions of the video series. So might as well set it up this way from now. I'm trying to build this so we're set up as we continue to go forward. So go ahead and connect all of those nodes. Now once you have those nodes, we need to start hiring workers in Trent. And to do that, we're going to need to buy some more nodes. So you'll need Longleaf Tree Sentry Post, Creoville, Longleaf Tree Forest, and Bear. Inside of the city of Bear, you are going to need to buy Bear 1 and 2. So those two houses for lodging, then at the Longleaf Tree Sentry Post, we are also going to buy both of these houses. Make sure to upgrade the lodging on the second floor to stage two. Inside of the actual city of Trent, we are going to buy house number one, which will be a storage, house number two, which you will choose lodging for at this point in the video series, and a house number five, which you will also choose for lodging. The reason we're doing this is to max out our worker capacity in the city of Trent. We can also buy Trent three, forgot about that one. Trent three can also be used as a lodging. So why are we maxing out our lodging capacity in Trent, Levi? The city of Trent has an exclusive worker that is only available to be hired in the city of Trent, and that is Bravant. Bravant has a hidden passive that allows him to make two additional ore crates whenever you send him to make an ore crate. What this means is that every single time we send him to go make an ore crate, he'll come back with three instead of one. So triple the output from the same worker. That means the nine workers that we're hiring right here right now are actually worth 27 workers because of the additional output that they do. It's actually kind of insane. The reason we're doing this is because we want to make as many crappy crates as we can to go and sell in Valencia City to hit the Artisan 2 trading as fast as possible. Professional traders that are watching this video are going to say, Valencia City, die, you're dumb, go die. And I'm going to laugh at you for watching a video that has beginner in the title. The reason we're doing Valencia City is because it's easier and it's what you're going to do all the time anyway going forward. So it'll help to train you on what you're actually going to do. The difference in time is like a day. So yeah, you can be lazy like me or go and listen to Steve in the comment section. Anyway, to hire this exclusive worker, you need to find the NPC Bravant, who's located over here in Trent. So there was the storage keeper of Trent, stable keeper over here. If we head across this little gangway right over here, you will see the NPC Bravant. Here he is hanging right here. You need to gain 500 Amity with this guy before you can buy a contract. His knowledge is the Calpheon City Adventure Journal, which you should have completed for playing through the story and messing around in the city a little bit. But if you haven't, look up the Calpheon City Adventure Journal to find those knowledges. Knowledges isn't a word. Anyway, go ahead and hit the conversation button with him to begin the conversation minigame, and his is pretty straightforward. For all of the ones where you need to be successful, I found this to be the easiest one to do. Calpheon Workshop Refining Method. Renee the Cat. Effects of the Wonderful Bree Drug. The Shia Incident. Madame Leventia and Calpheon Workshop Apprentice Recruitment. Even though those have really low chances to succeed, I think it's bugged because they're gonna succeed like 90% of the time. Like that's a 10% that's going through right there and it just went right through. Just keep running this Amity game over and over and over again until you finish it and get him up to that 500 Amity. 
And once you hit 500 Amity, you'll see the option that says employment contracts. From here, you can buy the contract for Bravant for 18,000 silver plus 500 Amity. Repeat this process over and over again until you have enough Bravant workers to fill up your entire inventory here in Trent. To redeem them, you just click the item in your inventory. That's all you got to do. So once you have the workers in Trent set up, now we need to give them somewhere to work. And to do that, we're going to use the city of Calpheon. Easiest way to do this is to click on the little city icon right here. In the top right corner of the screen, you'll see a drop down. Click on the unpurchased option right here. Then select by the filter option down here and scroll down until you see mineral workbench. This will show you all of the ore crate building camps that you can buy in Calpheon City. Find the nine cheapest ones you can as far as contribution points. To see how much they're going to cost, pick it, pick mineral workbench, and hit check purchase conditions. So you can see that this one will set me back two contribution points. Find the cheapest options for you. I know some people have storage set up in Calpheon, so work around that. Find whatever is the cheapest option to set up in. But you need to buy nine of those. Once you have nine of those picked out, you then need to assign workers to them. But before you can assign the workers, you actually need to give them something to use. So the storage keeper in Trent is going to get populated with various goods. These goods are going to be whatever crate you're going to make. For 90% of the people, you're either going to make a copper crate, lead crate, or iron crate, just because these resources are readily available on the market. So just to show you, let's take a look at like iron. You can buy iron ore pretty cheap, and there's usually a solid supply inside of it. Obviously, if you have nodes that are already gathering these materials, it's a great bonus to be able to just throw those in there. What you need to do is bring all of these ores to the storage keeper. So you can see my storage keeper down here has copper ore. The next thing you need is blackstone powder. This can also just be purchased off the central marketplace. So right there, there's a ton of it in stock. You can also make it by grinding blackstone's armor or weapon. And you can also make it by grinding these cheap crystals right here on the marketplace. So you can buy those or grind those, well, whatever. And by grind, I mean you literally press the L key on the keyboard, click on the grinding button and grind it. So you'll need to bring a bunch of that to the storage keeper as well. Everything that's gonna be made into these crates needs to be sitting inside of this storage keeper. So once you have the goods in the storage keeper's inventory, you can now assign the workers a location to work. To do that, press the M key on the keyboard, navigate back to Calpheon, and pick one of your mineral workbenches. In this case, I'll just pick Noble 2-4 right here. Click on the Manage Crafting option, scroll down the list on the right until you find your Trent workers that you just hired. They're all named Bravant, so it should be pretty easy to find them. You can see them all right here. You click on the Bravant worker and it will automatically tell you what you can make based on what's in your storage in Trent because that is where this worker is from. So you can see I can make copper ore crates because I have the copper ore sitting there. I click that button. I click this change button right here and set it to 50,000. Make sure it's set to maximum and then you just hit start work and they're ready to go. These workers are going to burn through resources. We're talking like 10,000 ore per day. So you're going to need to keep that thing steadily supplied over the next five to six days here. I'd recommend parking it all and using your storage maids and butlers to bring the resources there or just running back and forth from Calpheon to do this. Now, while they're making those boxes, we need to do another set of node connections, and that is connecting Calpheon City all the way to Valencia. This is a long journey of node connection, and hopefully it's popping up on your screen right now to show you everything you need to pick up. Just to show you the path on screen, though. Falray's Dirt Farm, Marnie Farm Ruins, Oz Pass, Brady Fortress, Northern Plains of Serendia, Lynch Farm Ruins, Heidel, Eastern Border, Camasil Temple, Otto Farm, Stonetail Horse Ranch, Asula Highland, Highland Junction, Altanova Entrance, Altanova, Altanova Gateway, Rock Post, Veterans Canyon, Kadri Ruins, Deserted City of Run, Run Gateway Intersection, Shakatu, Yalt Canyon, Gahaz Bandit Lair, Bamboo Valley, Iris Canyon, Kamak Canyon, Ankato Coast, Ankato Inner Harbor, Rakshan Observatory, and finally Valencia City. That is a 40 contribution point burn that you have to do to connect those nodes, and technically it is not the shortest path. The reason we're choosing this path is because it provides you access to a lot more nodes that once again we're going to use later on in the video series. But it is technically cheaper if you don't want to connect any other nodes and you're only doing this little empire here to run through Velia and then through the islands and down and around instead of through all the land nodes. So once you have all of those nodes connected, you can then start to ship crates out of Trent over to Valencia City. To do that, what you need to do is have money inside of your storage here in the city. So you can see I have 20 million silver in the storage here. The next thing you're going to do is click on the transport icon in the bottom right here. Click on the send option. Your destination is going to be Valencia City. 
So select Valencia City from the list. Transportation method is Trade Wagon. Select your stack of crates over here, hit the trade button, and you'll be able to send them on over. You just hit the send button. Yes, it costs 2 million silver. Yes, that means you're losing money right now. I'm sorry, we're just going to lose a little bit of money at the start to be able to make more money later. Personally, I'm a big fan of always using this feature. It does eat into your profits, but at the end of the day, it saves you a ton of time in real life as well as in-game, and you can make a lot more money than the 2 million silver that you're losing in that amount of time. It's a really nice pay-for-convenience feature in my mind. Now, when those crates are done being shipped, if you head over to Valencia City, you'll see the option to redeem those items, so you'll be able to just claim them as soon as you get them. You can even do it remotely, you don't need to have a character out there. Rinse and repeat this until you have enough crates to reach Artisan 2 trading. So this is a calculator to figure out how many trade crates you're going to need in order to hit the Artisan 2 stat. It's pulled from the Trading Resources tab in the LifeScale Discord server, so this is linked in the description below if you want to check it out. But basically, if you're running minimal buffs that like most people should have just playing through the game here, you're going to need like 10,000 crates. You can easily bump this up by picking up different buffs that you might have laying around. So if you have an EXP scroll and a Book of Old Moon running, you can see that it's only like 6,000 crates. So a link to this awesome calculator by Summer will be linked in the description below as well. Do note that you need to change this distance number to 99% down here. So change that to a 99 when you do get the sheet. File, make a copy right here. That's how you make an editable copy. Now as far as moving all of those crates from your storage to the trade manager out in Valencia City, I'll show you how to do it right here in Trent. All you do is you take your horse over to the storage keeper, click on the storage keeper themselves, click the storage option, click on the crates, inventory to your horse's name, Click the button there and it will send it to your horse. So you now have your horse here. And all you got to do is you got to move a little bit away from your horse and then whistle for your horse by left clicking the little horse icon in the corner. And you'll just drag your horse with you all the way over to the carry in person or the turn in person. So in Valencia City, there are two trade managers you can sell to. You can either sell to this one right over here or you can sell to the one at the top of the city. So whichever way you want to go. Storage is right here though. So this keeper is a bit closer. Now, when you finally arrive at the trade manager, go ahead and talk to them and you can hit the trade option and play the bargain game. So the bargain game is something you're gonna have to get used to here. Basically, my method for it is I click boldly and then I spam the carefully option and hope that I get it. This is the bargain bonus that I was talking about that scales with your trade level. It'll increase the value of the crates by a flat percentage based on your trade level. So you got that all squared away, happy, happy, ready to sell, click sell all. No, no, do not click the sell all button down here. Trade EXP has some spaghetti code in it, all right? What happens is you get EXP based on whatever level you started the turn in. So you get more EXP the higher your trade level is. If you click sell all at beginner one, you're gonna get beginner one EXP for all 7,000, 8,000, however many crates you're turning in, which is gonna suck. What you wanna do is you wanna turn them in very few at a time until you figure out how many it takes you to level up. So do like one, two, three, really, really small numbers. Check your character to see how much your EXP bar is filling up. And basically, make sure that you're always using one more crate or like two more crates to push over to the next level. Then drop back in, sell some more crates, and just keep checking it to make sure you're never increasing by huge jumps and leveling multiple levels. If you do that, you're missing out on a ton of experience points. So please, please, please do us all a favor here and make sure to pay attention while you're doing that. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. You're going to sell those crates over there. You'll hit Artisan 2. It'll probably take you about a week of doing this. Make sure to always keep your workers fed. If you play lots of different characters, you can open up your family inventory and put food inside of your family inventory. That way you can feed your workers on any character. So I can put this bird meat here. And then if I want to feed my workers on a different character, all I have to do is click on the worker tab and then I can hit recover all and it'll feed it from the family inventory no matter what character I am on. Keep them fed, always make sure that workshop has materials in it so they keep working, and you'll be good to go. Now, after you've hit Artisan 2, you're not quite ready to start making bajillions of silver. You need to get the Desert Trade buff. Desert Trade buff. So this quest line is another quest line you gotta do. I've got a video on it already, just follow this guide. I'm not gonna remake the guide, mainly because I can't because I already did the quest line once. It's one time and you're done. And once you've completed that guide, you are good to go. You are at Artisan 2 Trading, you got the desert buff, you have everything you need to start making money. At this point, you could technically disband the Trent Little Worker Empire that we got going here. If you wanted to go to Bear, get rid of the housing units that you have there, get rid of the housing units in Longleaf, get rid of the housing units over here in Trent, get back some contribution points, you could totally do that. Now, because this is such a great EXP source making these junk crates, you probably do want to keep this running though. Keep feeding it resources and keep it running while you're continuing to level up your trade skill. 
Every single time you level up your trade skill, it's half a percent increase to your multiplier on the sale at the end. Doesn't sound like a lot, but every 10 levels is 5% more money in your pocket. Like I said, trade scales really, 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 really hard as you continue to progress it. So yeah, I still keep this empire running to this day because I want to keep leveling that skill up. It is a major contribution point burn and you are losing money most of the time with it though. Anyway, in the next video, what we're going to do is show you how to set up an empire that's going to make a bit more money and actually start bringing you in some profits. And since this video is going to keep you busy for a week, I guess I got a week to finish it, right? Just kidding. I'm already scripting it. I, I got you. Don't worry. These are long and take a long time. But anyway, guys, if this video is going to help you to progress here in Black Desert, give you something to do, do let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have ideas for other videos you want to see, please let me know as well. Love taking viewer suggestions. This is a viewer suggestion that's been sitting on my to-do list for quite a while. Thank you all so much for watching once again. I'll see you at the next live stream over on Twitch, YouTube video right here, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.